Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to illustrate the key concepts that are involved in behaviorism, the school of thought. The major behaviorists are William James and uh, Ivan Pavlov, B.F. Skinner, E.L. Thorndike, J.B. Watson, Claxi Hall, Truman, and many others. But for the purposes of this course, we are going to spend much of our time on this major behaviorist, that is William James, Ivan Pavlov, B.F. Skinner, Thorndike, and Watson. The reasons for the, there are several reasons uh, for the rise of, uh, that led to the rise of uh, behaviorism. And these include the failure of analytical introspection, the success of other sciences, the associationist tradition, and the theory of evolution, the research on uh, animal behavior, Ivan Pavlov's research on the classical conditioning. These are some of the reasons that led to the rise of uh, behaviorism. And uh, in the next following slides, I'm going to illustrate each of these uh, each of these uh, reasons in depth. The first one is the failure of analytical introspection. If you remember very well, introspection was uh, the method of study that was used by the structuralists, that is by William Wundt and uh, Tichner, as well as uh, the functionalists, that was uh, the functionalist school of thought, they used the introspection. So the failure of analytical introspection was one of the reasons that led to the rise of behaviorism. The main proponents of behaviorism were mainly interested in both animal and uh, human behavior. Introspection as a method of study was uh, seen to be useless and uh, not applicable in the study of uh, animal behavior. Through the use of experiments, behaviorists established that there were relationships between animals and the environment in which they operated. They rejected this methodology in favor of experiments which were controlled and could, uh, could be reproduced in different uh, settings. So this is one of the reasons why, uh, why behaviorism resorted to the use of experiments after noting the inadequacies of uh, introspection as a method of study. The other factor that led to the rise of behaviorism was the success of other sciences. Just as Wundt had been attracted to the scientific method because it uh, led to the pro progress of, uh, in, uh, in the academic understanding of the world, Watson was also impressed by the successes of practical applications of science in the natural sciences. This was a theme that was uh, common in Watson, Skinner, and other behaviorists who tried to replicate or apply some of the main tendencies of the natural sciences within the study of human behavior. The associationist tradition. Behaviorists believed they and retained the idea of analyzing complex walls into simple parts which had been formed in the past. Watson believed that the complexities of behavior was a result of simple associations between stimuli and responses. The stimuli might be the environmental conditions, just as in the example of uh, Ivan Pavlov's uh, dog, whereby there was an association between the stimuli and the 
that is the dog the, the, the meat the meat the meat powder and the bell so there was an association between the two the theory of evolution was also one of the factors that led to the rise of behaviorism the theory of evolution implied that animals which survived and reproduced were those whose behaviors was best suited to their environment so when uh, watson argued that he could turn any normal child into any type of human being he thought that a lot of human behaviors were learned and therefore this was not only a result of evolutionary selection hence the influence of uh, watson's idea is that what is evolved in men was the capacity to learn where what has been learned can be left in the open the research on uh, animal behavior was also another contributor contributing factor the research on animal behavior brought uh, to the fore the issues of research and inferences that such research could have uh, bearing on uh, the behavior of uh, animal being animal human beings the theory of evolution illustrated that there was a sharp divisions between human beings and animals it suggested that animals might resemble human beings in many ways and that they were less developed and hence simpler in their functioning and conduct uh, Thorndike did a lot of research with cats well as you are now aware Pavlov also used uh, dogs in his uh, research on uh, classical conditioning so it can be noted that uh, the research on animal behavior and on animals it bearing on the rise of behaviorism as a school of thought Pavlov's uh, research on classical conditioning most human behavior is far from simple unlearned reflexes Pavlov's discovery of simple conditioning situation which was later called classical conditioning changed the face of uh, psychology as we now know it today his research was generally unknown in the United States of America when Watson first declared the behaviorist revolution as soon as watson got to know of uh, pavlov's research he realized uh, his attention and adopted the conditioning paragraph par paradigm is an explanation for most learning that uh, usually occurs between human beings even within their environments behaviorism is a school of thought contributed a lot to the development of uh, psychology as a discipline one of the major uh, issues is that uh, the focus of behaviorism was on predicting and uh, controlling behavior with the view of changing it for the benefit of humanity it introduced uh, behaviorism introduced most psychological concepts to the general public watson introduced uh, consumer behavior and this was studied uh, scientifically under laboratory conditions and uh, most behavior most behaviorist theories have been used in the clini in clinical practice for the past 50 years with uh, effective uh, results the theoretical basis of behavior therapy lies in the behaviorist assertion that uh, behavior disorders are studies studied uh, are studied through the application of classical and uh, operant conditioning another application of behaviorism is in counseling the counselor is seen as an enforcing agent and is there to help the client translate his or her problems into behavior terms 
and goals that can be worked on during the therapeutic um, process. And uh, within industrial or occupational psychology, organizational developmental strategies have been used to focus on studying uh, individual behavior within their work environment. So in other words, it can be realized that uh, behaviorism has contributed a lot to, to the development of psychology. And it is also used uh, within uh, educational psychology, whereby teachers apply the principles of uh, reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive reinforcement, as well as uh, punishment as a way of uh, increasing or uh, increasing desirable behaviors among among students. So, in other words, it can be argued that indeed psych behaviorism has contributed a lot to the growth and development of um, psychology. Thank you for spending your time watching this video. If you haven't subscribed, we urge you to subscribe to our channel. That's the only way we can uh, you can appreciate us for the work that we are doing in trying to bring you to bring to you issues of uh, psychological practice and uh, various psychological concepts you can share comment like or put your comments below so that we can hear what your sentiments on uh, issues that you may want us to to do videos on or issues that you may want us to you may want to share with us based on this video or any other videos that we've done in the past. Thank you for sharing your time with us and may the Lord bless you.